Hey, how's it going, Jason? All is well, sir. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Good, um, man. Cool. I just had a question for you. And, okay. Uh, I just wanted to see. Um, why do you say white people need to stand up against black people? Like, I thought your goal was to unite races. And to me, that sounds divisive. Do you think that sounds divisive when you say that? No, not at all. What I want to do is unite the blacks and the whites back together. You might not be aware, but for the last 70 years uh, or so, give or take, black people have been blaming white folks. They have been beating up white people, knocking them out, going into their stores, robbing, and, and still even during the daytime, it's like a group of them are rushing to a white business and the blacks been begging for affirmative action and reparations. They want to get into the white people's schools, and when they get in, they destroy them. They have been um, blaming the white people for their uh, failure. They're not capable. And instead of white people loving them enough to say, no, that's not true, no such thing as racism, I don't hate you, your problem starts in the home and you're listening to your so-called black leaders afterward. Uh, uh, black people are going out of control. But if white people were to stand up and push back, black people would settle down again. Okay. That makes sense? Uh, somewhat. I mean, I, 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 I understand where you're coming from. And, and where am I coming from? What do you understand about it now? Um... From what you're saying, it sounds like uh, like you're saying like black people may be kind of like destroying things that white people may have set up. Yes. And, uh, and uh, they may be like crying, racism or something like that. Do you hear them to, doing that? To make an excuse. But some people. Yeah, some, people. Some, some black people, right? Um and yep. do you agree with me that if white people stood up and said, no, this is not true, wouldn't those black people eventually settle down and start taking care of themselves and start whining? What's not true? Like, what do you mean, what's not true? That is not the white man's fault that black people are losers. <laughs> 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 I don't think that it's the white man's fault. Right. Black people are losers. But, uh, but that's what they're making white people the think. So what? I said I wouldn't describe it as calling black people losers. I mean, would you might call it like success? Would you call no. it success? Uh, overall, like I, I, overall, yeah, I would call black people a success. Would a successful like a people be? Would a ses successful people be blaming and taking and wanting free education, free affirmative, everything free? Where's the success in that? No successful people would not. Right, so they're that. not successful. Successful. Um. Well. But like you like to say, like not all, not all. Right, not all, not all, not all, not all, but um, most. most, but not all. Yeah. But um, I, I want to ask though, since since you were talking about the way you feel like things are, wouldn't it kind of be like the fault of like the people of your generation? You know what I'm saying? The reason that black people might be in the condition that we are. What, what do you mean, like, my how do we let it? Like, because when I listen to you, it sounds like. You talk about there were better days in the past. Yes. Like things were just better back then. Yeah. And I think some things were better back then. I mean, I wasn't there. I can just listen How to How old are you, Malachi? Uh, I'm 30. Were 31. you born in Georgia? Yes. Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. But um, uh, back to my question. Um, Like, why, if things were so good back then, like, how did, like, people let it slide to the way it is now. That's a good you know question. Like, clearly, if things were, like, better back then, and, you know, I guess from what you say, black people were more responsible back then, how did we allow it? How did y'all allow that? Like, people <laughs> that were walking Well, I'm not earth allowing earth. it. I'm up here every day for 31 years trying to do something about it, right? Um, you make a good point. What happened was, that phony civil rights movement happened. 
Because up until that phony fake civil rights movement, no such thing as civil rights, which should have never happened, black people were taking care of themselves. They didn't have leaders. No one was telling them how to think, how to treat others. And, but they allowed that thing, civil rights, so-called civil rights thing to happen. And black people turned their lives over to the so-called black leaders. And the black leaders, Jesse Jackson and all those guys, sold the black people to the Democratic Party. They made a deal. If y'all let us lead the blacks, we would let you, we would give them over to you for money and free stuff so they could vote for you. That's what happened. The civil rights movement is one of the things that happened. That should have never happened. And I believe that if that had not happened, black people would be much better off today because it's not normal to have another man leading you. It's normal for women to have men to lead them, but it's abnormal for another man to be over you. God is your head, not some other human being. But the civil rights movement happened. That was the worst thing. That was worse than slavery, Jim Crow, so-called police brutality, or any other thing that could have happened to blacks. What's the civil rights movement? What's the worst thing? Well, if, if men were just stronger back then and families were much better back then, like, who started the civil rights movement? Like, was it black people? <laughs> yeah. Like, um, uh, the, like, how did it even become a thing if it was you know, just so bad? Good question, or, man. It was people like the NAACP and other who have been trying to gather control of the blacks for personal gain. And so what they did, they had this woman, a uh, black woman, they went and found this black woman and, and told her, hey, we need you to go sit on the bus and act like the white man won't let you sit in the front. We got your back. And but they wanted to start a mess, right? And so... The first black woman that they tried to get, when they about to do it, they found out she was pregnant out of wedlock. Ooh. And there was no way black people were going to listen to that. They weren't, they, it wasn't going to work when they found out this woman was black. I mean, black female pregnant out of wedlock because black people had class back then. They have none now, but it was embarrassing to have children out of wedlock. So they went and found this phony woman. Uh, what was her name? She dead now. Rosa Parks. Yeah, they found phony Rosa. That's who you saying? She's the phony woman, Rosa Parks. Yeah, that's what they taught me. Yeah, they tried to make Rosa Parks help started. You know, right, they the used party. Rosa Parks. It was a setup. Rosa Parks then just one day left home, left work. There was the first woman was a woman by the name of Claudia Claudette Cloven according to Wikipedia, but she was found to be pregnant out of Wella. Then they found this phony woman, uh, what's the one you just said, Rosa Park? Rosa Park. And they set her up to do it. And they gave the impression that Rosa Park just happened to be coming home from work. Lord, my feet are tired. I've been working so hard. I ain't sitting at no back of no bus. It was, it was a setup. The, the NWCP had her back. She wasn't on her own. And they did that to deceive the blacks. It was a setup. That's how that whole mess got started. Now, I don't know how Martin Luther King Jr. got involved, but it was a setup. So they, so the civil rights, the people who started the civil rights, you don't think that they were, like, trying to help black people? They were just out for their own gain? 100% out for their own gain. Look at them now. They fat. Living in big homes, wealthy, their children gone to the best schools, they have fathers and mothers, their kids got the best jobs, but they haven't done anything for the people. The people are worse off today than they were before that. It was for personal gain. Okay, so. Uh, that makes sense? I, I'm still a little fuzzy about how, if you're telling me things were better back then, how could the civil rights even get? So big, why would people even support this unless, I mean, people just felt like it was necessary? Or, when you uh, have the media on. in your pocket, the support of the media, and you set yourself up as a leader, you'll be surprised how the media can make a good person look bad. Because people believe the media. They're starting not to believe it anymore. But they use the media to make 
uh, the Jim Crow situation looked like something worse than what it was, and the people fell for it. Okay. Kind of like Trump. Yeah, they did that to Trump. That's right. They did it to Joe Aparo, the sheriff out of Arizona. The media can make it look like whatever. Look at the blacks, whatever they want. Look at the blacks now. The media can tell them, for the example, man, now this one, are you sitting down? Yeah, I'm sitting down right now. Yeah, make sure you are. The media is now saying that this attack about Asians are done by white people. While we were looking at the video, it's black people who are knocking them out, robbing their stores in Canada. <laughs> but they're telling us it's white people. And we're looking at it. And lo and behold, Malachi, there are black people who, who you talk to them about, oh, the white people are taking the Asian. I'm like, when have you seen that? <laughs> well, I don't. I Isn't can't that a mess? I've seen any videos with my own eyes, but I hear people talk about it. So that's, I mean, you know, it's just what people are saying. Up in San Francisco, uh, they've been showing videos uh, of, of black people. And the Asians are complaining, they're rallying up in that community in Los Angeles. You, you can walk into the average Asian market. And you hear them fighting with black people. It's not white people, but b because the media and the so-called leaders, they're telling the people it's white, even though they don't see the white people doing it. The black people are like, oh, the white people are attacking white supremacists upon the Asians. I'm like, what the? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> well, I Isn't it, that a mess? Uh, I would agree. If that's what's happening. That's definitely a mess. But I say that. I mean, I, don't, I know you got things to do, but um, it, you live through civil rights, and it's 2021, and you say that black people are immoral and they can't think for themselves. What should, what would be your advice to the black community if if you was to do like, how could we, I guess, get back to a, get out of the fallen state, or get back to a, be decent people. They have to. Be your advice. They have to do what they did prior to the civil rights movement. They have to become individuals again. They have to uh, return to God. They have to uh, uh, allow God to to uh, turn their hearts of stone into hearts of love, so they can treat, love God with all their heart, soul, and might, along with nothing else, and love their neighbor as themselves. Because it, but prior to the civil rights movement, black people treated all people the way that they would like to be treated. White people treated all people the way they would like to be treated. We were a Christian nation. And then they, have, they should get married if they want to have kids or family, get married. And day one, teach their children how to work and be independent and not be whining wimps and blaming other people. It would change overnight if the blacks did that. They, be, they should become Americans and not African-Americans. Jesse Jackson and others had black people calling themselves African-Americans so they would not identify with America. It would make them seem like this is not their homeland. And it really is. So they got to become individuals again and get away from all this black mess and blame it. The black men got to lead the way. The women need the men to lead the way. Black women are a mess. They're out of control because they don't have the order of God. God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, and woman over children. And they don't have that order. Black women need men to be right so it can bring them out of the hell that they're, getting, they're into. Black women are lost. They're radical. They're crazy because they don't have the man to guide them. I do agree that uh, men should lead women. Yeah. And, uh, I it, do agree with that. And it was like that prior to the civil rights movement. I remember. I had the, I had the so what now? I think men still lead women today. Uh, uh, they uh, they lead them to the whorehouse. <laughs> they, may, they lead them to be sluts. <laughs> <laughs> and they're uh, slut man. makers. But let me tell you this. I remember when I was in high school. 11th and 12th grade, I used to go up to Atlanta for the summer sometimes. Atlanta was beautiful. As a matter of fact, I had thought that I was going to live in Atlanta until I came to California for one summer. And I realized, no, California is paradise. 
And so I decided to move to California. And if I didn't live in L.A., I was going to live in Atlanta, Georgia. And at that time, and this around 67, 68, those area, that period of time, white people were right in Atlanta then. But when white people left and they let the blacks take over, look at when Atlanta now. Atlanta is a hellhole. What? When did white people leave Atlanta? Because the so-called black civil rights leaders start running for office and stuff like that, mayor and all that. And once those people started to win because the blacks started voting them in, uh, they turned a beautiful city into a hellhole. And so white people left. And once the white people left, there was no more hope for that city. I mean, I live in Atlanta now, and, you know, it's, it, we, like, overall, we feel like, it's, you know, it's a good place to live, you know, it's uh, like a positive vibe out here. I mean, of you, course, there's crime and pockets around the city. It's all over. We did overall. a show on it one day, and, and Nick, my producer, had showed a map of, of the crime areas in Atlanta. It's all over Atlanta, the city of Atlanta. And uh, because the white people left there, it's nothing like Malachi, you 30 something, you say? Yeah, 31. Had you seen it 31 years ago, it would be beautiful, man. It wasn't like it is today. It wasn't, <laughs> it's the bl black gay capital of the world, right? I thought, uh, yeah, I hear a lot of gay, gay people up there. do move to Atlanta. Now, everybody's not gay in Atlanta, but a lot of gay <laughs> people do move to Atlanta. Maybe Why they, they move there? Home. Because they can't stay at home. I don't know. <laughs> but, but uh, no, man, Atlanta's beautiful in the springtime, man. It's plenty of women here. Great ratio. Like, it's beautiful uh, place. Uh, in the <laughs> suburb, it's beautiful, but it's dangerous in the city now of Atlanta. But, but uh, Malachi, amazing call. Have I said anything that you disagree with since we've been talking? Um, I might disagree with still how you say white people need to stand up. I mean, maybe if, maybe if it was something that I do think, I don't think all black people's problems are because of white people. But, but if just hearing you say like, y'all need to stand up, like it felt like a rally to call all those. Like, but don't you think yeah. that white people need to love the blacks enough to tell them the truth, that their complaints yeah. are, it's a, it's a weakness and we're not your problem and we're not superior to you. But I've never heard a white person say that. I know, but you hear it all the time I, from I the black. That if somebody said it. Yeah, but it's not the whites who are claiming to be superior. It's the blacks who see white people as superior to them. That's why they always, they have a thing called, the blacks have a thing called white supremacy. That's how they see it. That's not how white people I see it. I white supremacy. Yeah, I heard the white supremacy. The black people made up that word because they believe that white people are superior to them. And the proof is in the pudding. If you look around Malachi, wherever black people take over, it become a ghetto. Uh, damn. <laughs> Not everywhere. Not everywhere. Name a place where a majority of black people took over and it's not a ghetto. I've been sad <laughs> that you're leaving. I rest my case. <laughs> <laughs> Malachi, if you open your eyes and just pay attention, you'll see, like, wow, Jess is right about all this. And it wasn't, and the reason I can compare it to something because I know what it was like prior to the civil rights movement when black people were majority a decent people. But I, I, so I have something to compare it to. I grew up on a Jim Crow, Malachi, and it was nothing like what the blacks are doing today. Nothing. But I'm saying, you said you was talking about civil rights and those were like the people around your time and you saying that affected the black community in a negative way. So I'm like, I feel like the people today are cleaning up well, the black people, there's what always been a bunch of black, they call Talented 10 or something like that. Uh, WG yeah. the Boy and all those guys. They have for a long time been trying to be the leaders of black people. They've been trying to take over. They hated Booker T. Washington. They hated Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver and others because they would not go along with the race hustlers. 
it's been around for a while, but it, they weren't able to completely take over the blacks until the civil rights movement, as far as I can tell. But look around, man. You see, and by the way, my I have a godson named Malachi. I mean, he's probably smart, funny. He's a football he's player smart. at one of the universities well, now. What <laughs> university? One of the universities now, and he is okay. he white. <laughs> How did you find the show, my show, Malachi? Uh, you just popped up. I was on YouTube, and you just popped up one day, and uh, I was uh, listening to a couple episodes, and uh, it was really interesting. Are and, you a uh, slut maker? Uh, I used to be. Yeah. Are you a slut maker now? No. Oh, good. Yeah, we got to get it right, man. Malachi, call me again. Amazing call, man. All right. I'll talk to you. All right, All right, All right buddy. Thanks for calling. Amazing. You just got to slow down and look around. You'll see. Know thyself and you can know the world. Really. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.